Hello, this is the second lecture of Math 21. The title of this presentation is One-Sided Limits. Recall that in the first lecture, we introduced the notion of limits. And when we are evaluating the limit of a function as x tends to some number a, we need to consider values of x that are very, very close to a from both sides of a, meaning to say, for those x values that are greater than a and x values that are less than a. In the last lecture, we look at these values in two ways, using a table of values for the function and the graph of the function. So for this lecture, we will have four topics. First, we will introduce the notion of what we call one-sided limits. And second, we will look at the notion of approaching zero through positive or negative values. Now after this, we will look at limits of piecewise functions. And as a particular example, we will look at greatest integer functions. Let us start. So first, let us consider this function here, given by this piecewise function. So f of x is equal to 3 minus 5x squared if x is less than 1. And f of x is equal to 4x minus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 1. Note that 3 minus 5x squared is parabolic, while 4x minus 3 is linear. The graph of the function f is given by this figure on the right side of the slide. So this is the parabola, 3 minus 5x squared, and this is the line 4x minus 3. Now let us consider the point x equals 1. As x tends to 1, the value of the function f of x depends whether x is less than 1 or x is greater than 1. When x is less than 1, note that the function is given by the parabola. But when x is greater than 1, the function is given by the line 4x minus 3. Now, observe that as x approaches 1 through values less than 1, so x is less than 1, what happens is that f of x approaches negative 2. And we can see that from this graph. So when x is very, very close to 1 but less than 1, the corresponding functional value is very close to negative 2. On the other hand, if x is approaching 1 through values greater than 1, f of x approaches 1. So here we are looking at x values that are greater than 1, and we see that the corresponding functional value is very, very close to 1. Now, let us consider another function. This time, let us consider g of x equal to the square root of x. So the graph of the function g is given by this figure here. Note that the domain of g is the set of non-negative integers. So the positive, or rather, non-negative real numbers. That means the positive real numbers and zero. Okay? So, if we consider the number zero, then any open interval i containing the origin or the point zero will have to include points that are outside the domain of g.
So, in other words, since g of x is not defined for negative real numbers, we cannot consider open intervals that contain zero where g is defined completely. And so, we cannot make x approach zero from both sides. In fact, we can only approach zero from the right side of zero by considering x values that gets closer and closer to zero but are greater than zero. Okay? So although we cannot consider intervals, open intervals containing zero, where g is defined, we can still say something about the behavior of the graph of g for points that are very, very close to zero, but greater than zero. Right? So we now present the intuitive definition of one-sided limits. So the limit of the function f of x as x approaches a from the left is L if the values of the function f of x gets closer and closer to L. As the values of x gets closer and closer to L but are less than a. In symbol, we write the limit of f of x as x tends to a minus is equal to L. Or, we also read this symbol as the limit of f of x as x tends to a from the negative side or from the left side is equal to L. Okay. Likewise, we have a parallel definition for the limit of the function f as x approaches a from the right is L. So the limit is L if the values of f of x gets closer and closer to L as the values of x gets closer and closer to L, to a rather, but are greater than a. So again, the limit of the function f of x as x approaches a from the right is L if the values of the function f gets closer and closer to L as x gets closer and closer to a but are greater than a. Okay? In symbols, we write the limit of f of x as x tends to a plus is equal to L. We also read this equation as the limit of f of x as x tends to a from the right side is equal to L. Okay. Now, as we have seen previously, the limit of f of x is equal to L as x tends to a if and only if the two one-sided limits exist and are equal to the number L. Now let us go back to our example, to our function f of x. f of x is a piecewise function defined by the expression 3 minus 5x squared if x is less than 1 and 4x minus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 1. Let us go back to the point x equals 1, right? Now, if we want to consider the limit of the function f of x as x tends to 1 from the left side, that means we need to consider x values that are very, very close to 1 but less than 1. So in other words, x is less than 1. So the definition of the function f is given by the parabola 3 minus 5x squared. 
right? So in computing the limit of f of x as x tends to 1 minus, we have the limit of the parabola 3 minus 5x squared as x tends to 1 from the negative side, right? And here, graphically, we see that the functional values are approaching negative 2. You can also obtain that by considering x values that are very, very close to 1 but less than 1. And computing uh, the limit, we can simply plug in 1 here to obtain 3 minus 5 times 1 squared, which is equal to negative 2. On the other hand, the one-sided limit, limit of f of x as x tends to 1 from the right, requires us to consider x values that are very, very close to 1, but greater than 1. And so, the function is given by 4x minus 3. Right? So we have 4x minus 3. And taking the limit of this, 4x minus 3, as x tends to 1 from the right, we have 4 times 1 minus 3 or 1. Now note that the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are not equal. They both exist, but they are not equal. 1 is equal to negative 2. And the other limit is equal to 1. Since these two limits are not equal, then the limit of f of x as x tends to 1 does not exist. And you can see that graphically, that when you look at x values that are very, very close to 1, but greater than 1, the functional value of f, the functional values of f are getting closer and closer to 1. On the other hand, if you consider x values that are very, very close to 1 but less than 1, you see that the functional values are negative 2. So, the behavior of the function f for points on the right side of 1 and the behavior of the function f for points on the left side of 1 do not agree. In this case, the limit of the function is non-existent. Now, let's go back to the other function, the function g, given by the square root of x. Graphically, if we consider the one-sided one limit, the limit of the square root of x as x tends to 0 plus, we see that the answer is 0 because the functional values are tending to 0. On the other hand, the limit of the function g as x tends to 0 from the negative side does not exist because we cannot consider x values that are less than 0. And so, with these two information on the one-sided limits, we can conclude that the limit of the square root of x as x tends to 0 does not exist. Okay. For the next example, let us recall the definition of the heavy side function. h of x is equal to 1 if x is greater than or equal to 0. And this part of the piecewise function is given by this graph here. On the other hand, if x is less than 0, the heavy side function of x is equal to 0, and the graph is given by this ray. Right? Now let us consider the limit of h of x as x tends to 0 from the negative side. Looking at this graph, we see that the limit is 0. On the other hand, if we consider the limit of h, as x tends to 0 plus, we need to look at this ray, this part of the graph. And easily, we see that all functional values are equal to 1. So the limit is also equal to 1. Now, the two one-sided limits are not equal, and so we can conclude that the limit of h as x tends to 0 does not exist. 
Now, let us consider the limit of h of x as x tends to 2. x equals 2 is here. So when we look at our heavy side function, we need to look at this part of the function, the graph, and we see that we don't actually need to look at the right side of 2 and the left side of 2 because there is no um, distinction in this case. The functional value will always be 1. And so on the right side of 2 and on the left side of 2, the trend is the same. And so for this limit, we have the limit of 1 as x tends to 2, which is equal to 1. 